So, Tia, when are you going to escape to um, Australia? When I know, right? Yeah. You leave London, you go to Manchester, or we'll go down to Dover, catch a ferry think, across. Yeah, I, I don't know how it's going to work. Basically, nobody's allowed out of England. It's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. <laughs> it's not bad. Oh, we just did it in Melbourne. It's not a another strand of COVID. It's taken them a few months to tell us, but... And the question was whether the immunisation will actually support the second strain of the virus. Yeah. I just, it, it's, it, I'll go for two years. I said this before. There's an outbreak in Sydney and we're an island. How can you not have an outbreak in, you know, I mean, like you're an island, but you're connected to Europe. We're an island away from everybody. You know, it's not like a a, a thing. But I just, it's been, uh, um, it's been one of those areas where I think the immigration is going to come so quickly out. I mean, like I was reading the story just today about a guy from America. How fucking stupid is this guy? He's got COVID. He dies on a United plane. He actually dies of COVID on the plane. Um, he, he hasn't had smell or taste for three days. He had got tested. They know he had COVID. He got on. When they were trying to resuscitate him, the wife's saying, look, he's got COVID. We know he's got COVID. They're flying to L.A., um, and he's on a plane. It was 170, 200 people on a, on a on a on a commercial flight, and he's got on it because he gives a fuck about nobody. And he yeah. dies on that plane, and everybody in that plane is now contained. They get off. They do no contact tracing on anybody on that plane. All of those 170, 200 people disappear into LA. What? But this is this is why America has 17 million cases because they don't know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. Because you've got a president who says it's a hoax. And he's telling people not to wear masks. And then it's no worse than the flu. I mean, but this is just, my point about, like, not having negligence. consistent information. Like, if you don't have it, say you don't have it. But don't give multiple pieces of information to confuse the shit out of everybody so that nobody actually knows what to go with. So whatever sanity there was or whatever preparedness there could have been now goes out the window because you've got some other denier saying, well, there's no point in wearing a mask or no point in doing X, Y, Z. It's yeah, like it was, it, was a, it was just an exercise in politics, you know. It, it's criminal negligence, and the only reason Trump didn't tell the truth is because he didn't want to be responsible for it. And so he'd rather pretend that it's not happening than actually have to do some fucking work. That, that's yeah. what this is all about. I, I, I actually think in the beginning he just didn't want to, uh, um, the bad reviews. He knew what was going on. He had the information. He even said, "I just didn't want the panic. I didn't, I, you know, look." The, 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 do a Google search on two things, right? Is it, what is the average age of a millionaire and what is the average age of a politician? And it's, I think one's 67 and the other one's 62. Now, if you look at, uh, this is my tin hat a little bit here, but you think about if you've got the people that have got money and you've got the people that have power, what do they do? They go, well, we're the highest risk of dying on this. I don't trust the populace. We're going to lock down. And America is the only country, well, not one, but it has been the country where people have gone, fuck you, we're not going to listen to you, we're going to do what we want to be able to do. In Australia, we've been locked down. In Europe, they've locked down countries. But if you look at where that comes from, if you're 20, there's a very low chance but, you're going to die. If you're 67, 70, there's a massive chance you're going to die from this. But, so you're not going to trust the populace. But, Matty, if, if it was up to the federal government, we wouldn't have been locked down. We were only no, locked down no. because of the state government. So that's the only reason we were locked down. So what anything that Trump wants to do, our prime minister thinks is a fucking great idea. Oh, mate, like China. What a great idea. Let's put a COVID thing on it and get all our things banned. I mean, it's like, <laughs> I get thing, that. Though. Like when it comes to sort of federal and state level decision making, California totally, you know, way before any of the other states had actually taken decisions, California had already put a lockdown measure in place. And I feel that why isn't there... Some level of sensitivity when it comes to <clears throat> response mechanism like why are, many planes how flying in like how how can we not be you know using the most stringent piece of information that we've all got to be able to share that and i feel that that is a symptom of being competitive rather than collaborative yeah because yeah. it's political it's not about health it's, it's about the politics Should what there does it make me look like what's the narrative going to be what's the newspaper going to write about me can there be topics that are apolitical? Mm, not, not when a politician is talking about it. I mean, health. Oh, the moment it's that you bring it into politics, it becomes a fucking debate. 
for sure. But everybody has a self-interest group or a group. Like, I mean, if you look at the hospitality group in, in Melbourne, if they had a bigger stick or they had more votes behind them, would you have locked it down? Because they knew it was going to devastate their industry. If you, you know, like the whole reason that uh, um, we got uh, um, the, the, the hotels was that the police turned around and said, we, we, we don't want to do this. We don't want to secure a building. We don't want to do this. And we've got a big membership that's going to vote. So they said, oh, we'll get security guards in. And on, the, and on the scope of that, that actually makes sense because do you get the armed forces in at, at, at $10,000 a day? Do you get the policemen at $5,000 a day? Or do you get security to come in at $1,000 a day? Use of money's purpose to actually do that. You'd want security. But realistically, it was because the army said no, the police said no, and now we had an outbreak in Melbourne because of it. It's a lot of these political decisions are based around the powers that be that hold large group vote, groups of voting. That's what it's about. You know, teachers get a big sway because they've got a group that's unionised that will vote a certain way. Police officers in another. That's what they set themselves up for. Like individual small business who doesn't have a say and you've got a whole bunch of people running around with no power will get outvoted. They've got no political s- s- sway. You know, you look what cigarettes got away with. You look what alcohol's got away with. You look at like most of these companies have got large voting blocks and put a lot of money in. The Pokies, for example, uh, um, down here in Australia, puts an enormous amount of money into governments. And so they get a lot of sway for what they want. It's always the case. Lobbying, right? Like you can lobby whichever way you wanted. Yeah. That's really, yeah, really I, simple. I think, I think you think just don't have lobbyists. Now. And you I don't, don't allow. I don't disagree with that. I, I I don't disagree with that. I think lobbyists and gambling and there's a whole lot of things. Tobacco, alcohol, lobbyists play a critical role in the way that policy gets formulated. But there are other things like a public health response, which we're talking about, which are more about public perception. And so, if you look, even if you look at the last week at media, and again, I've harped on about this for the last year. You know, we're the most consolidated Western media market in the world, other yes. than. Egypt and North Korea, um, and when eighty-five yeah, they're very of, open. They're very open. Yeah, very, they're very open, friendly societies. <laughs> uh, but when you when you when you have eighty-five uh, percent of your media owned by one ideology and one person, one company, um, what you've seen is you know when Melbourne was in lockdown, everything was dictator Dan. You know, Dan Andrews is the name of our state premier here, and so he was a dictator and he was destroying the economy and it was what a fucking tyrant and this is oppression because he was trying to actually save lives and lock people down and make sure they were safe. This week, New South Wales and Sydney have gone back in to lockdown and are going to have to wear masks. And because that state premier is on the right, not on the left, and Rupert Murdoch is on the right, all the newspaper covers are about, oh, she's doing it for your own good and she's just trying to protect you. And it's like the same fucking thing, exactly the same thing in a different state with a different premier and you called him a tyrant who was trying to destroy our way of life. And, that, and, I mean, and that's all, part of the issue. All their cases came from hotel quarantine and everyone was talking about how they're doing it perfectly. Yeah. And they're not. They're not. It, it, like... They kept letting people from aeroplanes get into Melbourne. I felt like they were doing it on purpose. I'm just like, that no one was actually sick. Like, that was just a joke, that they would just let someone catch a flight into Melbourne. Like, that means they're going through the freaking, what do you call it, the the terminal. How are people coming from an international flight and allowed into a terminal? Like, that's just like, oh, look. This is the city's water supply. That's got poison in it. You know, like- but Tony, Tony, we don't have enough space in Australia to accommodate people. You know, we can only land them in Sydney or Melbourne because there are no other airports and we don't have enough space. You've got to like, have a think about it. We're like Malta. Malta's only got one airport. It's like Australia. We can't do this shit. You're just crazy. You and your crazy ideas. You've got to think of it, mate. <laughs> That's quite shocking. Oh, it's... But you, you, but you think about it when you've gone down into lockdown for nine months, basically, and you've put everything on hold and you're saying, look, I've got to go and help my sister. How many people had to go and help their families who've got two kids and they haven't, they, we're blessed. Again, I, I'm at home, Leanne's at home, we can manage two kids and a puppy and yeah, it's difficult, sure. But if I was a single mum, fuck, you know, it's like, it's this is just level. We're trying to work at the same time, waving in and out, lack of consistency. Not yeah. knowing where to go, what information to sort of follow. Should I be stockpiling? Should I not be stockpiling? 
Uh, can you can you confirm that you know toilet paper is going to be available in two months' time? No. I mean, uh, but when you've got toilet paper, that's the most important. If you, you can eat it, you can uh, drink it. It's uh, it, it's ultimately you can plant it. It's the most important thing to stop all of the thing is to be able to have a clean bum. If I'm going with a dirty bum. I'm very upset. <laughs> you can clothe yourself with toilet paper. You can make wedding dresses out of it too. <laughs> oh. you know, install a bit, eh? Come on, let's people, let's crush the water. Let's crush water because, like, we don't need toilet. We need toilet paper more than we need water. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I give all the fuck. I still today cannot work out what the point of toilet paper got to such a level of insanity in Australia, America, and Italy, and in uh, um, England. <laughs> There were many other things. It's just that toilet paper, kind of like your issue with New South Wales and, and other states, it was just about what the media concentrated on, right? They didn't concentrate on the fact that we don't have, you know, we, it, it's the same sort of thing in terms of consumerism. There's a really fascinating article written in 2018 by The Guardian, and they write about plastic being like, do, do you think people are going to make decisions now based on plastic and reducing plastic? And like somewhere halfway down the actual article, there is um, mention of like a three pronged attack at making sure consumers were responsible for plastics in wildlife, um, in, in nature. And the way that they did that was politicians like Margaret Thatcher <laughs> blamed consumers and said, look at what you're doing to the environment. Why were you making these plastics in the first place? I would have to do something to either educate these organizations so that they wouldn't make this kind of plastic for the environment and or build an infrastructure that would actually collect it correctly. So the framework was never there and there were no standards either. So cowboy situation, everybody made anything and everything went. And so now you've yeah. got these chemicals and you've got these toxic environmental impacts, but Nobody's to, to, to take responsibility. Oh, look, it's like shopping bags. I mean, everybody turned around and said, oh, plastic shopping bags are bad. And yet they just bought harder plastics that are 5% recyclable. You know, like it's just taking a whole bunch of things out and just moved it to some other place. Nobody thinks about, like your point was, how do I recycle this? Why are we using hemp? Why don't we not sell plastic bags at all? And you, you turn up. Around and and there are so many solutions. It is a yes. joke. To turn yeah, around yeah. and say, you know, Hit human capability that can put a computer together can't make a computer that is biodegradable. 